good morning uh, gardening friends beautiful Sunday morning here in San Diego and this morning I am out just walking around checking things out here's my large guava tree and if you can see there's a nice guava right there late season guava this is the tropic pink variety and if you notice it's gonna flower very soon. Suriname cherry here. But um, it's good to come out every day if possible, or at least every two days, and check out all the trees. Make sure no bugs are eating the leaves. Make sure the tree looks healthy. another guava this is the white variety so see I'm talking about guava trees about this size like this one that um, it would only take you 10 minutes to go around taking off the flowers see this one's gonna flower right there and then just pinching off the pinching off the tips and allowing it to flesh out new branches because they do grow or actually they do flower on the on the newer growth and that's another reason why it's good to be outside just checking everything out um, especially when the trees are flowering just to kind of know where they flower this is about a half inch thick branch. And then another little branch came out right there. And that's where the flowers are. Here's another branch about the same thickness, half inch. A little shoot came out right here. And flowers on the end of it. All right, so this one appears to flower and fruit on the on the half inch branches. And I'm still learning about this tree. I gotta keep observing it. Here's the four in one apple tree. This side is the Fuji apple. And look where it's flowering on this short stubby little I don't even want to call it a branch just a little stubby thing and that's where the flowers are see right there so somebody might come around in the winter and see these little stubby things coming out and might want to cut them off there's another one But see, observing the tree, now I know it's going to flower on these short, stubby little things. So I'm not going to take those off if I prune the tree. So this is my first time growing plums. These trees are about three years in the ground now. This is the Santa Rosa plum right there, and look at that. On these plums, I noticed they flower and fruit on the on the young branches. See this this branch is very thin, and there's two plums right there. Here's another two plums on a very thin branch. This is the burgundy next to it. This one fruited on some pretty pretty thin branches also that one's only not even a quarter inch thick probably but then we got some fruit on a, a little bit thicker branches probably like a almost one year old branch right here here's my um, pluary sweet treat pluary this guy, same thing. Look, there's a fruit right there on a very thin branch. 
So where on some trees somebody would come in and prune all these thinner branches and just leave thicker branches like these ones, that would not be the case with um, plums. You want to leave a lot of the newer growth because that's where your fruit's going to be. And you can learn this, like I said, by coming out, especially when the trees are flowering and paying attention to where the tree is flowering. Some trees, you know, flower at the tips of the branches like loquats. So all that information is very important, very helpful. So get out in the garden and observe your trees, study them. And coming out every day, if there's anything eating them, if there's anything happening, you'll, you'll catch it before it becomes a bigger issue. Another one right here, it's about to flower. It has really nice yellow flowers, not, qu not quite as big as the, the regular um, sunflowers. These are, these are about half the size of the regular sunflowers. I'm not sure, I don't think they're related. I think they just call it Mexican sunflower because it looks like a sunflower. But this is a great plant to have in the orchard because all these leaves that come off of it, all these dying leaves, look at that. That's fertilizer. It has very good levels of MPK nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and it'll feed your soil. So I'm starting out with these two, and I'm gonna collect seeds when they, when they go to seed, and the goal is to grow them everywhere if, if possible. If I have enough of those, that'll be my, my main way, one of my main ways of, of feeding my plants, that and my, my chicken compost. See, I added a lot of the the stuff I took out of my chicken run, quite a few wheelbarrows about a month ago. All right here. You can see some of it right here. This stuff is full of life. I'm surprised it's quite a little bit dry. There you go. This is what you want on your ground. Good stuff. And with the rain we've been having, I know a lot of those nutrients hopefully leached down into the soil. All right, let's go look at the... I wanna do a video talking about avocados pretty soon. You think my avocado sick? Looks like it, but it's not. It's dropped a lot of leaves, but I'm getting to know this reed avocado. It behaves the same way every year. It loses all its leaves this time of year. And it flowers at the same time and then grows beautiful new leaves. So you can see the beautiful new leaves coming out right there, everywhere. And I, I pay a special attention to, to my avocados. Everybody knows avocados uh, can be a little bit more sensitive than other trees. So I always come out, look at them, make sure the leaves aren't wilting, make sure nothing's eating the leaves. And I believe something that is helping me out a lot is that I, I'm growing a variety of different fruit trees and plants all close together so it provides a really nice environment nice habitat birds come around quite a bit 
I've seen birds getting grasshoppers and I've seen them getting uh, caterpillars sometimes. And then you gotta have some some flowers too. A variety of different plants. That way you also attract uh, beneficial insects like ladybugs. There's my jackfruit right there. See there's a hole on that newer jackfruit leaf right there. I don't see anything on it. Another good tip, I just went to a California Rare Fruit Growers meeting uh, last night here in Oceanside at Maricosta College and you guys should check it out and, and join California Rare Fruit Growers. Um, I can't remember what the fee is to join the the group it, it uh, all California group but then there's different chapters for example I live in North County San Diego so I'm in the North County chapter so I paid ten dollars yesterday to, to sign up for the rest of the year you know that's a super good deal ten bucks there's a meeting every third Friday of every month and there's different topics all the time. Yesterday, um, Greg Alder was there. He's a master gardener who lives in Ramona and is growing a lot of avocados and citrus and stone fruit and a vegetable garden as well. And he talked about irrigation. Um, he talked about uh, pruning, uh, thinning out fruit. Um, and not getting good fruit set. So it was a pretty good, pretty good, uh, meeting. I learned a few new things and, um, one thing I learned is it's good to come, if, if you can't f figure out what's eating your plants, come out at night with a flashlight and, and go out, you know, go see, cause that's when, um, most of the bugs come out to eat the leaves so that was a pretty good tip I never thought about doing that um, but I haven't had many issues with bugs eating my plants like I said I feel since I have a lot of variety of different things it's like a little ecosystem here and nature takes care of itself plus uh, pest bugs they go after the weaker plants so if you if you're building good soil if, if you have good soil if you're taking good care of your plants keeping them well hydrated all those things then your plants are going to be stronger and healthier and the bugs are not going to go after them the bugs and the pests seem to attack the weak plants like my um kale and Mostly my kale, about a month or two ago, the kale plants were just older, you know, they're getting weaker probably. I stopped paying attention to them. Um, they pretty much started dying off and then all of a sudden bugs came and devoured them. But I didn't care because I got a pretty long season harvesting kale. So they kind of... They kind of actually did me the favor of, of getting rid of getting rid of them for me. The little the little bit that was left over, I just pulled them out and threw them in the chicken run, and they they ate the rest. So that's what I'm getting into: just learning and doing, uh, working with nature instead of against nature. That's why I don't use chemicals out here. I don't use any sprays. I mean, sometimes if, if one of my trees is getting attacked really bad all the time, I'd prefer to just rip it out and try a different variety instead of uh, having to spray stuff or spending too much time caring for the tree. I work full time, so I want, I want this orchard to kind of take care of itself, you know? 
I don't want to do a whole lot other than walk around every day in the mornings or after work and and enjoy it walk around with my pruners in my back pocket walk around with a basket to harvest some fruit gardening's got to be fun enjoyable but you got to put in the work at first i had to bring in or they they brought them for me you know the tree service companies probably at least about 10 truckloads and we had to spread mulch my dad there he is my dad helped me a lot spread the mulch all over the wood chips all over the property and then we had to plant all these trees of course it was a lot of work at first but now we're uh We've got we're, we're, we got the benefits of it now. Anyways, that's that's it for today, guys. Gotta go inside and get ready to go out with the family. See you on the next video.